Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 115, and I just got back from a conference this past week, the American Academy of Audiology. I gave a few talks at that conference, and I should be able to show you guys some footage of that conference here in next week's vlog. But for today, I actually want to talk about something regarding over-the-counter hearing aids. So um, there's a lot of stuff to kind of unpack here. I hope I'm not all over the place when I'm explaining this. Uh, before I get into it, if you could do me a huge favor, click that like button, hit the subscribe button as well with notifications so you can see more of these videos. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about over-the-counter hearing aids. So um, over-the-counter hearing aids will likely be approved by the FDA at some point, I'm guessing in the second quarter of 2022, meaning that the, the over-the-counter hearing aid guidelines will go into final effect and then people will be able to start selling over-the-counter hearing aids legally. But we have a little bit of additional insight even beforehand because direct-to-consumer hearing aids have been around for quite some time. Now, the whole aspect of making over-the-counter hearing aids something that is basically regulated federally is because they wanted to create a segment. When I say they, I mean like the government and some key stakeholders wanted the, um, uh, the government to have some regulation on the option of over-the-counter hearing aids for individuals with mild to moderate hearing loss. So essentially making a lower cost direct option that individuals with mild to moderate perceived hearing loss can go and buy these devices without having to go in and get a hearing test and get like prescription hearing aids, okay? And, and I think it's a noble thing. And, and if I'm being truly honest here, um, I think early on, a lot of audiologists were like really against this, basically saying, hey, you know, people need to be diagnosed before getting over-the-counter hearing aids. I think a lot more audiologists are kind of coming around and realizing that like, okay, well, you know, if individuals try those devices and end up not liking them or not having good success with them, then they'll just naturally migrate into getting professional treatment. I happen to be one of those individuals. I've been very pro over-the-counter hearing aids for a while for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm not a huge fan of a bunch of government regulation on things, and I think that uh, having the regulation of you cannot access audiologic care without going to a hearing care professional like myself, I don't like that aspect of it. I think that people should be able to have some kind of an option if it is even remotely uh, feasible in terms of it being a successful treatment option for them. And the other thing is, is that I just think there needs to be better accessibility. And I think that there needs to be some kind of a stepping stone to go from a mild to moderate level hearing loss into something that is more of a traditional prescription level hearing aid to treat something that is more significant than a mild to moderate hearing loss or treat a mild to moderate hearing loss individual that is not getting success with over-the-counter hearing aids. But here's kind of the curveball, and here's the thing that I think a lot of over-the-counter hearing aid companies, once they start popping up, are gonna realize, which is um, there's a couple of different rules of thought on this. Number one is there is a huge segment of individuals with mild to moderate hearing loss who do nothing about their hearing loss, right? They, they don't go and get treatment. Uh, they may not even perceive that they have a whole lot of difficulty, maybe just some mild to moderate level difficulty that doesn't justify actually going and getting professional treatment. And then you have this other perception, which is this group of individuals is just, they can't afford to go and purchase prescription level hearing aids and that's the reason that they're not treating their mild to moderate hearing loss. So those are the two groups, the individuals who just don't feel like it's a problem and the individuals who don't or can't afford or don't want to have to purchase devices to treat their hearing difficulty. Now, there's kind of a couple of different beliefs about approaching both of these groups. So the group that doesn't perceive a hearing issue it's gonna be hard to get them to do any kind of mild to moderate level treatment anyway. So if there is over-the-counter hearing aids and they're just like, yeah, I mean, I may have a mild to moderate hearing loss, but it's not even a big enough deal for me to do anything about it. So now we have to consider that group to be inaccessible anyway. And then you have this other group that is, I have a mild to moderate hearing loss and I'm perceiving the difficulty of that in my day-to-day -day communication, and the only reason I've been avoiding treatment is to actually get uh, some kind of over-the-counter device that is lower in cost and more affordable. And I think that that part or that segment is going to be the primary segment that OTC is geared towards. However, there is another segment of the population who think 
that they are in that mild to moderate hearing loss range and they have a you know five hundred to twelve hundred dollar problem on their hands and they're waiting for over-the-counter hearing aids to come out. And what are they gonna do when they come out? Well, they're gonna try them, and I'm, I applaud them. I think that's a fantastic idea. But we have started to see some kind of anecdotal information come out from certain companies that are kind of going into this direct-to-consumer uh, distribution model. And I can't tell you who, but there is a significant player in this space that has started to identify that about two thirds of the individuals that are actually purchasing their direct to consumer product are not getting benefit from them. And they're actually returning them for a refund, but there's nowhere else for them to go. And so here we are in a situation where this, this, uh, these OTC companies, they're gonna try to get into this mild to moderate hearing loss group of people. And for a long time, this group of people has been impenetrable, whether it be from the perspective of they just don't perceive a difficulty or they can't afford the treatment to get it taken care of. And so I think that there's going to be some individuals, approximately a third of individuals who are even contemplating going this over-the-counter hearing aid route, they're gonna get benefit from it. They will get benefit from it. And I think that's fantastic. And hopefully they get a significant amount of benefit from it. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see because we just need more data on that. But what I think is also going to happen is that a lot of the people who think that they have a mild to moderate hearing loss level or a mild to moderate difficulty from a hearing perspective, they're gonna try over-the-counter hearing aids. They're gonna be like, man, this is just not working for me. And as it turns out, they are not part of the group that's a mild to moderate hearing loss. They might be moderate to moderately severe, moderately severe to severe. The one thing that I know is that individuals with even a mild level of hearing loss often underestimate the amount of difficulty that they're actually having, or sorry, not that, they, they know the level of difficulty they're having. I think that they um, underestimate the severity of their level of hearing loss. I mean, you have some people with a severe level hearing loss that swear up and down that they only have a mild level of hearing loss and then vice versa. People who have a mild level hearing loss and they swear up and down that it is a severe debilitating level of hearing loss. So essentially what I'm trying to get at here is that I think that the, the issue that a lot of over-the-counter hearing aid companies are gonna run into is that the market for what they're trying to sell to or who they're trying to sell to is actually quite small. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to penetrate this 60% of the market who is just not going to treat their hearing loss no matter how cheap you make the hearing aids. When you look at other foreign countries outside of the United States that basically cover the entire cost of hearing treatment, their uh, essentially penetration rates for the amount of individuals who have hearing loss that are actually treating their, that are actually treating their hearing loss with hearing aids, they're not having that much higher treatment acceptance than what the United States is. So it makes me wonder, I don't care how cheap you make it, at some point people are just like, yeah, I just don't wanna do it. I mean, either I'm not perceiving any difficulty from my mild to moderate hearing loss, or um, I just don't want to do treatment even though it is totally affordable. So it's gonna be a very interesting landscape. I think a lot of these initial over-the-counter hearing aid companies are going to kind of try to show some traction inside of the direct-to-consumer world. And then when they realize that, man, okay, so two-thirds of our individuals that we sell to are returning their devices to get a refund, and we have nowhere else to put them, what I think is gonna happen is that a lot of these over-the-counter hearing aid companies are going to get absorbed by the major hearing aid manufacturers. And this is why. Um, first off, the major hearing aid manufacturers are the ones with the money inside of the hearing industry, right? And so what I think will happen is that they'll purchase these direct-to-consumer devices, uh, not only to kind of control the marketplace, but also when individuals who try these products end up not having success, they already have a built-in distribution network of prescription hearing aids, and they can basically say, oh, well, John, you didn't have success with these devices. Go and see Dr. Cliff at Applied Hearing solutions in Phoenix, Arizona, he can get you taken care of. And essentially they kind of win on both ends, right? They are either going to be selling these direct to consumer products right from the major hearing aid manufacturer and sell them for a price that's probably in the range of $800 to $1,500 for a pair of hearing aids. 
And if you don't have success, they're like, no problem. You're, you had enough difficulty to at least want to try it. Here is your next option. You can go and see a hearing care professional and they will actually be able to take care of the level of hearing loss that you have. And if they can't, then essentially they will get you referred to an otologist who can perform a cochlear implant surgery on you and then you can get cochlear implants or auditory brainstem implant, whatever that next logical option would be. So it's gonna be very interesting coming out of the gate with, over, with over-the-counter hearing aids, if you ask me. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of players who get into this space who end up not gaining enough traction to justify being purchased by a major hearing aid manufacturer. And there's gonna be a lot of investor money that's wasted. Uh, I don't wanna say wasted. I mean, um, a lot of investor money that's lost. And like I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, I do a fair amount of consulting with investors who are looking to invest in some of these early startups uh, with their over-the-counter hearing aids or their direct-to-consumer hearing aids. And I just have to caution them that I think that people are overestimating the amount of adoption that they're going to get from this mild to moderate hearing loss group that has been a nut that everyone's been trying to crack for decades inside of the entire world, not just the United States. And I would be just shocked to see if the needle moves substantially from over-the-counter devices. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I mean, I actually want to be in this distribution of over-the-counter hearing aids to individuals who cannot afford prescription level treatment. I've said it before on this channel, as soon as over-the-counter hearing aids are essentially uh, uh, allowed and, and the rules are finalized, those rules would preempt, most likely would preempt the state laws that would prevent me from selling hearing aids direct to a consumer without an actual hearing test. And so once that happens, I'll be able to essentially sell devices online to whoever wants to try them. And then I can maintain that contact of, okay, what are the things that we can do to optimize your performance with those devices? And then ultimately, if you're not able to achieve the level of benefit that you're looking for, I can provide guidance to actually going and getting professional care, going to a hearing care professional who follows best practices when actually treating you with prescription level hearing aids. Um, and on top of that, the, maybe not even prescription level hearing aids, maybe taking those over-the-counter hearing aids, going to a hearing care professional for them to optimize those devices better if they can be. And that is really the other thing that direct-to-consumer companies can't do. They don't have a network of individuals who can optimize devices. It has to all be done virtually, which you can do a decent amount of stuff virtually, but at the end of the day, like you can't do real ear verification virtually, so you're not even sure or they're not even sure if a patient is getting the full amount of benefit out of their over-the-counter the hearing aid. Um, so it's gonna be a very, very interesting space here in the next couple of years, I think. And like I said, I think this is going to start happening uh, at some point early in 2022. I think that you're going to see some uh, companies that are already out there trying to get into that part of the market or set themselves up for that part of the market that are going to already be selling their technology to a major hearing aid manufacturer or licensing that technology to major hearing aid manufacturers because they realize already that the data isn't making sense to them. So um, of course, if and when that happens, I will be one of the first ones to share it with you guys. And that's really all that I wanted to talk about this week. I think that ended up being a pretty long ramble. Hopefully you guys hung, hung on with me the entire time. Uh, if not, totally get it. But hey, if you're here with me right now, you did, and I appreciate it. And uh, as always, guys, I'll see you next week.